Welcome back to another video. So yesterday I did a shopping list for wing bits and I know it was supposed to be short. I understand it was supposed to be short and it ended up being over an hour long. I felt that it just needed some context to it when y'all want to know why we decided or why I decided to use some of the items that I suggested. So this video right here is going to be the short version that this was supposed to be. And if you want the explanations and the details and the deep details of why I chose some of the items that are on that video or on this video, you can go back. I'll refer back to this video and, you know, you can spend an hour. It does have, you know, chapters on the bottom so that you can switch to different chapters and stuff like that. It also does have links to all the items that we discuss. Yes, the links do help out the channel. It throws a couple of pennies here and there so that I can buy more items to test out for y'all. But like I said, it does have chapters. If y'all want to go and see, you know, if you just want to find out about antennas, you can, you know, go to this section right here. If you want to just find out about lightning protection, you can just jump to this section. But this video right here is going to be strictly the items so that you can go through it quickly. Please press the thumbs up button like this video. This when you th press that thumbs up button, it helps wing bits by pushing that content out to anybody who's searching for it or anything like that. Not necessarily if you like my horrible production of this video, all my other videos or anything like that. It's strictly just helping out when somebody searches for wing bits or shopping list for wing bits, it'll help push that to help people out. So if you haven't subscribed, also subscribe because we're putting videos out all the time right now. There's a lot of crypto news going on, a lot of new deep pin projects and passive income projects that we're hitting on. So make sure you hit that thumbs up button and let's hit this video. So the first thing we're going to discuss is probably one of the most next to the antenna, the most important thing right now, and that is the flight stick, the USB ADSB receiver, whatever you want to call it. Most call most of us call it just the SDR which is for software defined radio or receiver. Um, this technically is what tunes that, but we have tested several, several different versions of these, you know, including this one, which was most popular version. Originally, this was a very good product. This still is a very good product, depending on what project you need it on. This will work great on a lot of different projects, just not this one. So by purchasing this item, you do not need to worry about filters or notch filters or bandpass filters or any kind of filtration like that you don't need to worry about any separate amps or anything else this does it all and it works very well this will give you about double or close to double the results that the black one this uh, that i just showed you the problem with this one is if you're in the united states amazon is sold out now when i did my video yesterday i got several people telling me that Canada has these, the UK has these, but in America right now, Amazon is sold out. If you can't get a hold of the green one, the Flight Aware Pro Stick Plus, make sure it's the blue Pro Stick Plus. That is basically the same thing. Testing that we did shows that it's almost identical as far as results. I said yesterday, I think the inside guts of this thing is going to be the same thing as the green ones probably made by somebody else. And they both just putting their box on it. Both work very, very well. It's just a, the price difference. You know, this one's $39.99 and you do have to pay shipping on it. When I bought these, it ended up being almost $20 more than the green version because this one was about $35 with no shipping because I'm a prime member and it came in within two to three days. Also, if anything does not work on this, when you get it in, Amazon has a, the most easiest returns that you can do. This one, not so much. But if you can't get this one, this one works very, very well. So they're both hand in hand. I don't see one that works better. Right now, these are the only two that I recommend. Do not waste your money or time. My recommendation, do not waste your money or time on anything else. If you have to buy one of these other ones and then, you know, use filters and stuff like that, it. It, it just doesn't make sense. So that is what we are highly suggesting on this radar box. Now, would any person who knows anything worth their salt in radios will tell you, everybody says, if you have to skip somewhere, you don't skip on antennas, you buy the best one you can. Fortunately for this project, the best antenna that 
out of all the ones we've tested, seems to be one of the best price ones. This one right here is $44.95. It comes in two or three days. We've did testing on it. I've showed the results before. I won't go in it. It's in the other video. I've hit 500 miles with this. I've hit 400 miles for this. I've hit 300 miles with it. I'm consistently using this on all my installs and I'm consistently getting, when I can get high enough above that roof line, over 200 miles consistently with this antenna, 44.95. The other antenna is a 26 inch. This antenna right here was one of the first ones we tried. It worked very, very well. I would say this is very close to the second place, if not tied for first, as far as results coming in. However, this antenna is $44.95. This antenna is $67. This is a 5.5 DBI. In this project, we have shown that the lower DBI works better. FlightAware also has this one, which is a 12 DBI for $90. And when I've used this for a friend's install, it did not work as well. I will also say this right now before anybody wants to argue with me. I have... 500 point to multi-point devices up around my area that I work on. What works great in one place and should work in, a, in the next place sometimes doesn't work. RF is really finicky, has issues. So I don't want no arguments from anybody saying I've tried this one and this one works better. This one works better than the one you had. Hey, I'm just telling you, and I showed in that other video that I showed you what some of these different results are with different antennas. So, if for some reason, because this one does get sold out because of the price tag, this next one from ADS-B Flight Away or from Signal Plus, whatever you want to say, this 5.5 one works very, very, very well. If I can't get a hold of this one, this is my next bet. Now, real quick, for some of those who have HOAs, if you have black gutters on an HOA, I have this installed at one of my family members' house. And she has a strict, strict, strict HOA. And this is a jet black antenna, which is the same one here from Flight Aware. This one right here is $55. It has some feed line with it. It has the proper connections on it. But if you have a HOA that is very, very strict, you can cover up the bottom parts with electrical tape or something like that, make it jet black. And hers has been up for about nine months now. Nobody has ever seen it, and it works. Yeah, it only has half the coverage because you can only see the back of the house, but I just want to give this option that in case you need a black one, there is a black one that's out there. I'll also say in my video, I also show a white one I did not get the best results from. But if you need a completely white one, there is a white one that is involved that is on Amazon that's completely white that is there if you need it. I'll drop a link also to that one. Um, again, I don't suggest it first, second, or third place, but if you need a white one, it's there. One of the poorer performance antennas that we tried was this one from AirNav. And I'm very disappointed because AirNav is also who makes the green SDR. For how great that is, somebody skipped their homework on this one. One of the most negative things about this one is the feed line on the top the, or the bottom. The feed line is attached permanently to this antenna. If anything ever happens to that feed line, it gets bit by a dog or you accidentally slice it or cut it while you're trying to tuck the wire away or anything. This whole $90 antenna is toast. You have to chunk the whole thing. You can't replace it. And 30 feet of this long, thin wire is a tad long as far as worrying about loss. So I wouldn't touch this one for $90 when you can get any of these other ones for better pricing, especially this one. This one's half the price and works way better. So that's antennas. I'll also have a link for feed line. If you need feed line under 10 feet, this feed line right here will have the correct connector you need on the end of it. You have to make sure you have this little pin in the middle of your feed line. Don't use one from Helium. If you're using the Helium feed line that you had on the Helium device, it does not have a pin. You need to put a little converter on it, which I'll have a link for that also. But this is short enough that this will go from the SDR to your antenna. And this is the proper male to female on the antenna. If you need feed line that's over 15 feet, I have a link for that also, and they have one right here that's 15 feet, and you can find it. But the biggest thing about this is 
15 feet, you need to make sure you're jumping up to an LMR, or this is called KMR because this is their brand, but you have to jump up to a KMR LMR 400 for low loss because of what high frequency it is. Can you get by with 10, 15, 20 feet, maybe 30 feet? Yes. I'm not going to say it's not going to work. I'm just saying for the best results, you want to start getting to a thicker line like this. Next, also, if you plan on putting some type of lightning arrestor, which I do suggest, if this is going to be all outside, you're going to need an end connector on both sides of that feed line. And this, and I have a link to that. You can choose how much feet you want. Technically, the lightning detect, the lightning arrestor needs to be on the wire before it enters the house if you have your miner inside. So you pick the footage you want, and then this will go from one side of the um, antenna to the lightning arrestor. And then you have two different types of lightning arrestors you have. You have one that will be on a feed line, like I was showing you earlier, where you would connect one feed line, and then this will go off to the antenna, and then your next feed line, this one would go off to the miner. Okay? Or the other one, if you have a very, very, very short run and your miner's outside, what I have is I have this right here connected straight to the antenna, grounded through here, and then you would use the feed line like I showed you earlier, where this would go straightly straight to the miner, and on the miner side, you would need the SMA. Next, I do have a link where it says SMA connected to convert helium. So this will add the little pin that you need in the middle, so you can connect this to your one side to your um, helium miner, and the other side, um, or to the SDR, I mean, and then the other side to the feed line. And then it will add this little pin in here to what you need so that you can be able to use that. Lastly, in case you can't find a pie, I had add, I added these links. This link, when we could not get pies, or pies were extremely expensive. I know they're getting better available now. But they do have these love potatoes right here that you can click on. And you can use these, especially if you're using for a single thing, just if you're only using for wing bits. Still waiting for BH, uh, BHS at Bit Harvest to be able to get an OS for this. It shouldn't take long. It's not that difficult. But... This is $35 and it works great. I have a lot of these uh, deployed. So if you decided you, you know, you want to keep your helium miner right now and you really, you want to get involved in wing bits, but don't want to convert away from helium, this is a great option. And then, then you can get with the bit harvest guys and then dual mine on that helium device if you want. So you can also, like I said, check that out that other video. It's got chapters. You can see where my blue line is and how my blue line, I hit certain um distances you know this is almost 500 miles to orlando 400 miles almost hitting atlanta 400 something miles and that's just what the setup that i'm telling y'all to get again i'm not saying i'm perfect i said yesterday that i'm learning all the time everybody's learning all the time this is not the one-stop shop that and use this or nothing else yes you can use a helium antenna if you check this video i show you the difference i do have two or three miners that are still using helium miners, uh, helium antennas, and I'll show you the distance I'm getting. So like this one, I'm getting 183. I might only be getting 100 with the helium antenna. So yes, I'm getting some. Yes, it can be used, but it's not ideal for the most proper best setup of what you're trying to accomplish with this project. All right, so this right here is one of my stations that you can see has 96 aircraft on it, 528 messages here or there. You can see where I'm hitting 200 miles with the blue lines in some spots, 150 in some other spots. So this is a helium antenna. Does it work? Yes. And this is the gray antenna. You got 50 more aircraft on it. You have 100 more messages on it. And you can see it is consistently over 200 miles right here 200 about 220 230 miles in some spots this is another setup i have with the gray antenna that i recommend you can see this whole cluster of aircraft right here in the middle this is new orleans um international airport this right here is the new orleans lakefront airport and you can see that this antenna right here is getting 250 miles around here this is the one that I um, 
had one of the longer ranges on also. But you can see that I'm getting way consistent more. And you can also see this one has double the messages. So the, that gray antenna works, your setup works. The biggest thing with this project is getting it over the roof line. This is not a project that you can put inside your house. It has to be outside. Even if you can only put it outside the window and suction cup on the outside the window, you will get a drastic difference. It has to be outside. But for the best coverage like this, that antenna needs to be above that roof line to see the sky all the way around. Don't worry about trees further off or anything like that. Just get it above the roof line. So closing out this video in record time compared to any of my other videos. Again, I'll have a link to the long video, but again, you don't have to watch the long video. Check the chapters out for whatever section you want to check out. If you want full details, more about testing and different stuff like that. And you can check any, any of these sections that you want, read it for yourself, but hopefully this short video helped you. And like I said, this isn't the end of all be all. There are other options out there. This is what's worked the best for us. Also, Wingbits does have a shopping list where you can kind of see, and they have links to some of these items also. Um, and some of the items don't match. Some of them they make easier for you or anything like that. Again, those items will work, but we've did testing, and this is the best output that we've gotten out of our different options we've tried. So thanks for watching this video. And make sure you subscribe. Make sure you like this video, please, if it's helped you out at all. And see you all in the next video.